Blessings to you on this day. Let us pray. O loving Creator God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our strength and source of life. Amen. Jesus wanted to build community. He wanted to bring people nearer to God. He was concerned about what kept people from God. He was very concerned about the most vulnerable in society, those who were cast out, felt lost, and was drifting astray. He saw their sufferings. He heard their stories. He listened to them. Jesus saw the places of social dislocation in people's lives, the places where they needed healing and restoration, where mending needed was needed. A community of Jews and Gentiles, young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sick and healed, insiders and outsiders came together. It was a rich community composed of beautifully diverse people with different opinions, thoughts, experiences, and cultures. Can you imagine what meals were like when Matthew the tax collector and Simon the zealot were discussing Roman politics? Or when Judas Iscariot and Peter talked about the different ways to alleviate poverty? How did Mary and Martha react when Thomas asked Jesus why women were allowed to sit with the men? How did the Jews feel sitting with the Samaritans, Canaanites, and Syrophoenicians? What about the orphans who would talk directly with the adults and ask questions? How do the adults feel? It is unrealistic to expect a community to be free of conflict. Jesus recognized that conflicts happen. He taught that speaking directly with the person or people was a healthy and constructive way of addressing conflict. Talk to each other. Develop a bias for direct communication. It is important not only to own your own perspective, but also to see things from another point of view. Have empathy, speak to each other, listen to each other. Jesus also recognized that sometimes people in conflict can't come to an agreement at that time. The offending party may refuse to listen to the injured party. And on that day, there may not be any justice. Jesus reminds us that even then, we remain in relationship with each other. Never give up on, up on each other. Whomever we call our friends, enemies, neighbors, strangers, we are all connected. We are all connected through our common humanity created by God. It is a truth that some may dismiss or consider to be inconsequential, but Jesus did not. It is a truth that we must accept or risk not being in right relationship with God. Today's Gospel reading is not a lesson in conflict resolution. It is about community. It is about what it is, how it suffers, how it addresses hurt, what a healed community can do, how a healed community can help heal others. If we truly believe that each and every one of us is created in the loving image of God, then how is it that we have enemies? Jesus tells us to pray for our enemies with the hope that through prayer, we will no longer see them as enemies, but our neighbors. We do not pray for them because we hope that they will come around to seeing things from our way or come around to our way of thinking. We do so because God loves them. What Jesus is asking of, of us can feel very difficult. 
It requires us to go beyond ourselves. It is not an intellectual matter. It is a matter of the heart. It is believing that God's love is for all, even those whom you despise. It is a matter of faith. So what do Jesus' words of wisdom mean for us Christians today? What kind of community are we called to be? We are living during a time of a pandemic, economic upheaval, systemic injustices and cries for reform, a climate crisis, and a polarized political landscape. There is too much human and animal suffering in the world. It hurts to live in a world that values some lives more than others, that some lives are seen as less valuable, less worthy, and less deserving. Jesus wants us to take responsibility for the conflicts that we have caused and to find ways to address conflict and to resolve them and to look at the state of the world and be accountable. What can we do to lessen conflict and hate in the world? Jesus assures us that we can find new ways of dealing with conflict in a healthy way. We can learn to create more neighbors and fewer enemies. We can look at those around us and believe that even those who disagree with us on very important matters are not our enemies. We can commit to going to great lengths to talk to each other, to engage each other in conversation, to listen to each other. Can we accept people where they are? Can we hope that others will go to great lengths for us? Can we hope that others will not give up on us as we have not given up on them? Can we be like the shepherd seeking out for that one lost sheep, or the father who welcomes the long lost son returning home? Will we go to great lengths to find and protect the most vulnerable in society? We have been given a vision of love, life, restoration, and reconciliation. We can heal our divisions. We can come together to address our differences, resolve our conflicts, resolve our disputes, seek an end to conflict, and repair relationships. With God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible. It will help us to remember that Jesus lived during a time as tumultuous and turbulent as our own when he spoke these words. It will help us to remember that Jesus believed that evil is not personified in individuals and groups of people. Jesus' commandment to love is not an abstract virtue. It is a deep, deep belief in God. It is an act of humanity. We do not love others to make them more like us. We love our neighbors because God loves them and God calls us to love our neighbor. In the midst of this tumultuous time we are living, Jesus wants us to recognize that God's time is here amidst the chaos. It is Kairos time. Kairos is a time of God. Not time as in a clock, but time as in a state of existence. I hope that this doesn't sound esoteric or abstract to your ears. I'm talking about the sacred in our lives. When we have felt God's presence in our lives, when we have felt God's grace in our lives, this is Kairos. That is God's time. Our beloved community, whether we meet virtually or in person, runs on God's time. 
God's time is not a chronological, production-oriented, quantifiable, achievement-measured system. It is a time that is measured by love and compassion, by mercy and kindness, by peace and justice, by compassion. It is a time when we choose to walk the path of love and light, it is a time when we choose to love our neighbors unconditionally as God does. A time to plant trees or flowers, to buy food for our neighbors, to pray for the sick, to interrupt instances of bullying, to, to use words of love, to learn a hidden history, there are so many moments of God's time that it is impossible to list all the manifestations of God's time, but I think you know what I'm talking about. This is not a time of Armageddon. Do not be distracted by such talk. There is no ongoing battle between good and evil in the world. Love and goodness has won already. It will help us to remember that Easter has happened. Resurrection has happened. Love has overcome the power of hatred, corruption, and darkness in the world. It is this powerful love of God on which the foundation of our community is built. We live in this truth. We live into this truth. It is up to us, God's beloved community, to figure out the ways to live the good news to its fullest expression. Remember we are a people of prayer. Remember to look to God, to look to Jesus, to look to the Holy Spirit that moves among us and through us and works with us for God's will on earth. Our faith community is shaped and guided by the Holy Spirit and by the voice of God that comes to us in the silence, a whisper, or a firebush. We're building the community that Jesus wants us to. We're nearer to God. We're living in God's time. We're living in God's space, God's physics of love, humility, and generosity. May God bless you with peace, patience, and courage.